Hello YouTube and welcome back. We've got a topic of conversation for you here today. We are currently sitting at September 3rd before the Rune Master 0.92 patch. And there's something that we've been talking about a whole lot in both Discord and Twitch chat. And I want to bring the conversation to you as well at YouTube. So I'm going to ask for chat participation while we talk about this. Hopefully it won't get too rambly, but it might. Now let's see what we can say. So we have, a, we have a piece of gear here. It's called Fractured Crown. There's some other sources of this as well. But the reason that I have a Fractured Crown on this character right now is the damage dealt to mana before health. I might call this Mind Over Matter. I might call this damage dealt to mana as we go through this conversation. My no matter is just a reference to Path of Exile because we don't have a cute little phrase that describes this. So damage dealt to mana, there's a couple of important things you need to know about it first as we dive into this conversation. But I guess to preface this, the interaction that I'm about to describe might change. The devs are interested in changing it and removing it. There's a lot to be said about endurance and endurance threshold. If you know what I'm talking about already, you're going to like this conversation. Um, let's get into it. The way that damage dealt to mana before health works is if you hold down alt, you will see each point of, uh, each point of mana shields five health. So it kind of, sort of has damage reduction built into it, but a percentage of the damage that you take is dealt to your mana instead of your health. There's a way that you can build a fractured crown character with or without a fractured crown. There's a, there's a way that you can build a damage dealt to mana before health character. What you could do and what currently works before the patch, before, yeah. you can build as little life as possible, which will leave you at about 950 life-ish. And then you can build as much endurance threshold as possible. So endurance threshold takes that little yellow line and it raises it all the way up. So it covers your entire health bar. Then if you have damage dealt to mana before health, you take a hit, that hit is mitigated by endurance. And then when it transfers over to your mana, your mana doesn't go down this much. It only goes down this much because endurance applies to it. That's really good. It is a, it is a high investment end game, not new player friendly thing that you can do. It's makes your brain feel really big. It's very exciting. It's fun to find this min max weird gear because you don't just have life, 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 hybrid life, percent life like you normally do. It's a different way of gearing a, char uh, gearing a character and it's very fun because it's high end and it's different and it makes you want to hit record and start explaining it because you want other people to see how big your brain is. The other ways that you can make your brain feel big, or rather the other ways in which you can gear your characters differently is, well, you can put health on everything or you can do ward. Sometimes you can put a bunch of ward in your gear. And if you often have, you know, five, six, seven, 10, 20,000 ward, maybe you start thinking to yourself, maybe I don't need health. Maybe I could build armor as the suffixes on my gear, like armor and percent armor on my gear, instead of building health and percent health on my gear. And that way your armor also applies to your ward, whereas your health doesn't really apply to your ward because you already have some other ward. So there's different ways you can build characters. It's basically a question of what suffixes are you putting on your gear? Why is this interesting? What's my gear look like? What kinds of things am I picking up off the ground? And do I get excited about them? Are these affixes garbage or not? Moving on. The devs are interested in removing the interaction between endurance, endurance threshold, and damage dealt to mana before health. We have a couple posts on, uh, on, on Discord that we could point to. There's, I think, two different devs who have been responding to this. Um, it, it's worth mentioning that in the past, the devs uh, have given some, given some contradictory information about how this actually works. But now that we're all on the same page, now that the player base and Discord people and, and Twitch people and the devs that we all have the same information. The devs are interested in taking that interaction away. So I'm going to pull up the, the text real quick. I could paraphrase it, but I'd rather give it to you immediately. The text is this interaction will be fixed. We will add more sources that rebuild a synergy between mana and endurance in the future. And that node is the first example. In that text, the node that they're talking about is Cerulean Rune Stones. It's in the new Rune Master skill tree, and it looks, from our current perspective, busted. It looks really good. 
it says a percentage of your maximum mana is gained as endurance threshold, which is pretty flippin' cool if you're building a character like I described previously. If this interaction is taken away, it technically helps you, I guess. It's just kind of weird. It's just kind of weird. I don't really understand why you do that. So I mentioned a moment ago that gearing is exciting and gearing is interesting. And like you, you like looking at an item on the ground and thinking like, oh man, it's got poison damage and crit chance on it. That's so bad because there's no poison crit build. Oh, but what about that one node in Serpent Strike that makes use of crit chance and poison? And then it, it's like, it's not a bad item. It's just a super niche item. And I'll probably never use it, but it's cool that it has one particular... Things like that, to me, are interesting. Where it's like, this item's not bad. It's just incredibly niche. And maybe it could be used for this one thing. What I don't like is having affixes that are just bad. I understand that Path of Exile likes to have affixes that are just bad because it dilutes the pool, because it makes it harder to craft, and it makes it more rewarding when you finally get the thing that you're looking for. In Last Epoch, your crafting is pretty deterministic. It's much easier to get the kind of gear that you're actually looking for. And the bad affixes, so to speak, even things like flat damage reflected to attackers, it's... I mean, I would never use it because I don't like reflect builds, but there is a use case for that. Percent damage reflected to attackers minion percent damage to uh, reflected to attackers is not the worst thing in the world if you build around it. But for yourself, damage reflected to attackers is niche. It's so niche that it's just bad. So like, there's, there's maybe one bad affix in the game. But most affixes could be good if you're building around them. So here's where it ties in. If EHG is going to remove the interaction between endurance threshold and uh, damage taken to mana before health, what is flat endurance threshold there for? What does it do? If you're interested in this conversation, I should uh, I should also mention to you on my YouTube channel, there are two videos. One is a bit tongue in cheek and only three seconds long, but the other one's about 15 minutes long and it's about exsanguinous. If you like this kind of conversation, I recommend you go watch the exsanguinous video. It's great. It talks about the history of endurance threshold and uh, and Ward, and Exsanguinous. It's a good video. So, if they make this change, which they're interested in making, and they're probably going to do, what is the purpose of building Endurance Threshold on your gear? Why would you... Do I have an example of Endurance Threshold? No, 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 no. I don't think I do. Why would you put Endurance Threshold on your gear if... if they make this change? Currently in the game, there are two builds that make use of Endurance Threshold. One is the damage dealt to mana before health, because it's good, uh, because of the, the interaction that I described earlier. The second interaction is like, eh, kind of, if you're playing a Lich, which uses Death Seal, Death Seal puts your health very close to your Endurance Threshold anyways, and having one good Tier 6 or Tier 7 Endurance Threshold roll on your gear is pretty good value, because it means that you're it, when you're in Death Seal, that... Uh, all of your damage is being mitigated, so all the incoming damage is mitigated by endurance pretty much all the time. So that's that's pretty good. If they make this change, when they make this change, there will then be only the Lich use case for endurance threshold. And even then, you can just not build it and you're pretty much fine. So why is endurance threshold bad? Let's talk about it. Endurance threshold is bad because endurance is dynamically set to a minimum of 20% of your maximum life. So as you build more life, you gain Endurance Threshold for free. So every time that you put Endurance Threshold on your gear, you could instead be using life. So like tier seven Endurance Threshold, it's a pretty big number. Tier six is a pretty big number. But tier five and below got nerfed a long time ago before endurance threshold was dynamically set to 20% of your maximum life. So these days, what you'd like to do, what, what the meta approach for building a character in Last Epoch is, and if you've been playing for a while, you already know this, it's to put hybrid life on every single piece of gear that can have hybrid life. Hybrid life looks like this, this, uh, this flat health percent health, wasn't always in the game, and it's very, very strong. And then you take every piece of gear that can have percent health, like this piece of gear, it's got 12% increased health on it. You put increased health on it. And that is a uh, helmet's 
body armor, and belt. So most belts, except for mine, which don't ask me, most belts, for example, have percent health and hybrid health as suffixes. And now that they've introduced cooldown recovery speed to it, that's a really high value affix, but it conflicts with you getting percent health and hybrid health. And that is the very, very meta way of building characters. So assuming that you have a character built the right way, and this, this is like, this is, bear with me. Assuming that you have a character built the right way, which is hybrid life on every piece of gear that can't have hybrid life and percent life on every piece of gear that can't have percent life, you will have the at least 25% increased maximum life. You could also get percent increased life from your masters whatnot. But assuming that you have at least 25-ish percent increased maximum life, the life, the flat life values that you can get on your gear, things like my tier 5 73 life here, things like this are higher value than endurance threshold. And I know that sounds like if this, if this, if this, then it's finally better than endurance threshold, but that's how you should be building your characters anyways. Because everything already supports that. If you built nothing but endurance threshold, and you built no life, and this is cool, right? You, you could do this. You're like, oh man, what if I only built Endurance Threshold and I didn't build any life? Well, you would have about 950-ish life. Let's call it 1,000. You'd have 1,000 life and 1,000 Endurance Threshold. And that's interesting because if you have life gain on hits or if you have life recovery or a leech, all of your health is always mitigated by that 60% damage reduction. It's pretty cool. On the other hand, if you build all life, instead of building all endurance threshold life and all your gear life and all your stuff you will have about 5000 maximum life and 20% of 5000 maximum life is 1000 which means you'll have 1000 endurance threshold so would you rather have 5000 life and 1000 endurance threshold or 1000 life and 1000 endurance threshold that is the conversation that we're currently having so why does endurance threshold exist? I'm going to bring up another dev comment. And when I bring up a dev comment, I'm bringing it to enrich the conversation. I am not doing a witch hunt. So if you fucking witch hunt, I'm going to come after you, man. Let's go look at the conversation that prompted me to hit record and start talking here. Let's go click on this. Pitchfork. No, put your, put your, put them away. Put them away. You put that away right now. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, let's see. Let's, let's pull this up on the screen. Put your pitch force away. This, this is an interesting conversation and it has to do with endurance, endurance threshold, and what the devs want endurance to be in last epoch. Because if you ask a new player, and if you ask like a brand new person who's streaming the game, go, go jump in one of those Twitch streams that has like two viewers in it. Go ask them. They're like, oh man, don't you love how when you almost die, your endurance kicks in? It's like, oh shit, I almost died. And then, and then I didn't because that's what endurance does. And endurance is exciting. Endurance is exciting the same way. Remember Risk of Rain has one shot protection in it? Yeah. And when you don't get one shot, you take a huge chunk of damage, but you're not dead yet. You can still panic. You can still play around it. And that's what EHD does with endurance. That's why it's there thematically. So this user says, are you happy with the current state of endurance threshold? Flat endurance threshold. It's used on one ish build. If you are removing one of the two builds that uses it, are we going to see any improvements to flat endurance threshold? So we're going to read through this. Kane says, as a general mechanic, we are fairly happy with what endurance accomplishes. This is what I was just saying. It's meant to protect the last portions of your health and help you survive low health situations with a lot of tension on the verge of death. And it does do that. It is not meant to be a constant damage mitigation mechanic, which is what the bug, apparently it's a bug that the damage dealt to mana before health gets reduced by endurance. It's certainly possible that we might change up endurance at some point in the future, but it's unlikely to be a binary defense. So binary defense is interesting and like constant damage mitigation mechanic is interesting as well. So let's, let's go back to EH to, uh, to last epoch itself. It's not meant to be a binary defense and it's not meant to always be there. I've heard new last epoch players say, I don't want to build endurance because endurance starts at 20% damage reduction by default, right? It's, it starts at 20% of your maximum health 
and it says uh 20% damage reduction and you can raise that up to 60% damage reduction if you spec into it 60% is the max it is damage reduction it is binary it is always there i've i've heard new players say i don't want to build damage reduction i don't want to build endurance percent because i don't ever plan to be on low health and when you when you repeat that to yourself in your head you start thinking to yourself, oh, you sweet summer child. Like, you don't plan on it? Like, I don't I don't wear a seatbelt because I don't plan on ever being in an accident. It's it's exactly the same. <laughs> so endurance. Endurance is one shot protection. If damage would take me from full health to below my endurance threshold. My endurance would kick in. Okay, it's not literally one-shot protection, but if the damage starts above and it goes below, it does kick in. This is contrary to things like the Primalist passive. The Primalist passive, uh, let's pull that up real quick so the people know what we're talking about. Do, do, do. The Primalist passive is this. This thing here. While on low health, you take less damage. This is not one-shot protection. This does not apply if you are above and the damage would take you below. You have to already be below and then take damage and then this applies to you. On the other hand, this applies to ward, so it's different. So this, this is basically mm, pseudo one-shot protection. Wear your seatbelt, build life. As you build life, it dynamically gives you endurance threshold. It builds endurance threshold for you. Building endurance threshold is only in, is only endurance threshold. Building life is life and endurance threshold. And then you build your percent endurance because it gives you that 60% instead of 20%. You get it on gloves, you get it a blessing. And it's very high value. This is how you should be building your characters. Maybe, nah, maybe 85, 90% of the time. So it's not meant to be a constant damage mitigation mechanic. The question here to the dev is if it's not meant to be a constant damage mitigation mechanic, why am I allowed to stack flat endurance threshold? Why am I allowed to do that? Because even, even without respect to damage delta mana before health and the endurance and the, and the mind of matter stuff, even without that, because they're about to remove that, even without that, I could still just build up endurance all the time. It's not meant to be, a, but I can't. <clears throat> all right, let's keep going. Scroll, 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 scroll. Why is... What a, what a great response. Why is flat endurance threshold a possibility? If you want it to only apply on the verge of death, should you be allowed to raise it to 100% of your maximum HP? Currently, the affix is virtually always infer, in, uh, inferior compared to getting a comparable affix of flat health, percent health, high health, which is true. Uh, we have math for that. Also, the relevant values tier 1 through 5 score, scale poorly because they were nerfed in the past. Watch the Exanguinous video. And only the exalted tiers of tier 6 or 7 are they not garbage, which is true. The dev responds, the point is not the strength of the ethics. The point is using the correct tools for the correct job. If endurance values need to be adjusted, which they probably do. That's a good point. Good point. That's certainly something we should look at. Allowing bugs to backdoor the mechanics uh is not the appropriate use of that and i and you listen i agree with this it seems as though the damage not to mana before health endurance thing was not intended but we know from before with the response that trask gave us that they are interested in reintroducing a new more intentional relationship between mana and endurance such as the new root such as the new node in the mastery of rune master cerulean runestone which is percentage of your maximum mana gain is endurance threshold all right, so Kane says, again, we are happy with the thematics of the mechanic. Again, new streamers, new gamers, they almost die, and they just get through it by the skin of their teeth. It's very exciting, and it is very exciting, so that's great. That you can get into situations where you feel like you're about to die, but thanks to endurance, you actually have more room than it feels like at the moment, and this is a good emotional moment that EHD, like, make, chat, you need to make sure to applaud when they make good choices better fucking apply. I don't personally feel like there's a situation where no one uses it. 
Um, it is tricky because I think I think these two people are talking past each other. Kelvara here is talking about flat endurance threshold. Kane might be talking about percent endurance, but let's keep reading. I commonly commonly see endurance recommended for health builds as defensive layer. Not all builds use it commonly. Certainly, different classes have more synergy with defensive layers than others. I think I think this is kind of a miss. The only classes that might not build endurance are classes that have like absurd war generation. Ab absurd war generation, like. If you're going to walk around and have 20,000 ward all the time, at some point, you might just say, hey, I'm going to build armor instead of building health, because health really isn't giving me that much. So, yeah, I think I think this is kind of a miss. The best thing about the, the best way to build defenses in Last Epoch is damage reduction and endurance and building endurance in the way that I described by building flat health, percent health, hybrid health, and then getting your endurance from 20 percent up to 60 percent. That is the most readily accessible, easiest to scale form of damage reduction in Last Epoch. And that's why it's so common. So when you say not all classes use it commonly, hmm. Builds that use ward are not commonly going to use endurance, and that's by design. Mm -hmm. I do agree that endurance threshold is not commonly picked up as a defensive layer compared to things like increase health. Yes. Excellent. Good. I do agree that it's not commonly picked up. It is not picked up because it's bad. If you're building your characters properly, Endurance Threshold is taking up space where you could have health instead. Endurance Threshold is not a high value stat. Let's keep going. What do we got? Boom. Uh, Kane apologizes for confusion. Let's keep reading. Kane says, part of the reason that there isn't increased or more Endurance Threshold, as you might find in other stats, is that Endurance can provide a significant damage reduction that we don't want to easily apply to the full extent of the health bar. So, first of all, I'm pretty sure there is. Isn't, isn't there increased endurance threshold? Isn't that on channeling Smelter's Wrath? Or is that flat endurance threshold? It is. It is increased. It's like it's like more. Is it more? I think it's more. But who cares? <laughs> oh, it smelt is wrath. Okay. So once again, Kane doubles down and says we do not want it to apply to the full extent of the health bar, which you can. That's important. It's currently possible to protect your current uh, high health. Yes. In both cases, you're not simply gaining a less damage taken modifier to your significant health bar you're trading for something the former having less total health to work with so the former is bad like having less total health to work with this this just means don't think about health think about effective hp again if you're interested in effective hp you're gonna love my youtube channel because there's a whole video exclamation point ehp in chat as i mentioned earlier we don't want endurance and endurance threshold to be a defensive layer that you build up and it's just effectively a less damage taken FX all the time. Adding more threshold and increased threshold can happen, but would need to be in combination with a trade to prevent endurance from entering this binary state. This doesn't mean that binary defenses are bad. Resistances are an example. You often have them You're reducing damage. Endurance is a situational defense and we want it to keep, we want to keep the situational part of that. This I would push back on. Endurance is not a situational defense. An example of how you could make endurance to be a situational defense is you could, this is, this is totally just one example. You could incorporate the idea of a savage hit from Path of Exile, which is like, if you take one hit that deals more than 35% of your maximum HP bar, it's like, yo, what the fuck? That dealt so much damage. You could have endurance kick in then. You could say, all right. If the goal of endurance is only to create high drama moments, which is the stated goal of endurance. Endurance is there to help players feel like, oh shit, I almost died, but I didn't. And then I got by by the skin of my teeth. That's the stated goal of endurance. If that's the purpose, instead of having it be binary and always apply, which it is and it does always apply because you're always wearing your seatbelt. You could have it where it only kicks in for the next four seconds. 
if you've taken a savage hit recently, you have 40% damage reduction. That could be a thing. There's no particular reason why I couldn't. But the fact that he says, like, and he said this multiple times, endurance is a situation. It is not in a situation on defense. The person who said, I don't want to build endurance because I never plan on being low life is the person who doesn't wear the seatbelt in the car. And that is a mistake. It is not a situational defense. It is always there. It is one shot protection. It does apply to damage that brings you below the endurance threshold. In a way, endurance threshold is a mechanic to do that. It sounds like an awesome, unique ethics. Endurance threshold does not scale. Endurance threshold gets in the way of you building health. And health is endurance threshold. That's, that's the bit right there, right? Health gives you endurance threshold because endurance is set to 20% of your maximum health. So what are other ways that you could address this? You could have endurance be flat instead of endurance being a percentage, right? Instead of your minimum endurance being 20% of your maximum life, you could have the minimum endurance be 400. Or you could have your minimum endurance be 100 plus 2 per character level. And then building more health doesn't just give you more endurance threshold. You'd have to build endurance threshold if you want to build endurance threshold. So endurance threshold does not does not have a place. There's 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 bad builds. I love that dread from Epoch builds just walked into my Twitch chat. There's bad builds. <laughs> there's plenty of weird things. And you're like, oh, I'm going to build endurance threshold. But like, you probably should just be building health. There's a reason that it's meta. And it's been the meta for building your characters for defenses for the past three years. All right. So that's, I, I think that's the extent of it. Is there anything else that Twitch Shot wants to add? What, do, is there, is, what do you got? What would you like to comment on before we wrap up this YouTube video? YouTube, if you've got comments... It's a whole comment section for you. Let me know what you think. Did Kane have a response? Was there something lower? I don't think there was anything lower. Oh, I got you. This is good. Let's read this. Why does flat endurance threshold exist at all? Got you. Uh, why can you increase it past 20%? This is because we do want it to still be a defensive layer that players can manipulate the values and build of. It's just a matter of how much total effect so that it still say or so that it still says as a situation on defense and not a less damage taking position. So that it mostly comes down to a number tweaking. We want as many layers as possible, but we don't want it to cover the entire health bar. Player choice, RPGs are fun, choices, stuff. You could set a cap on it. You could say the maximum endurance threshold is 50 or 80% of your maximum life. You could talk, you could have flat and not scale past 20%. You could have diminishing returns. You could. The most exciting part is not knowing what you'll find next. That next item could be exactly what you're looking for. All right. Remove it. Make it roll dynamically with unique affixes. You could make it unique affixes. You could do that. You could do that. You could. You could make it hybrid. You could have uh, flat health hybrid with. Uh, with flat endurance threshold. I, like endurance threshold by itself. Eh, it's kind of boring. But like endurance threshold hybrid with percent endurance. We could have endurance threshold hybrid with less damage taken. Endurance threshold hybrid with some kind of resistance or armor. Endurance threshold hybrid with less bonus damage taken from critical strikes. Get some hybrid. I, I love hybrid modifiers. Whew. I got YouTube videos about that too. I think we've said about all we can say. I'm going to read what Dread has to say here. What do you got? Endurance threshold, if I'm correct here, was originally added to the game because they changed protections and resistance, but they didn't change the stun calculation. So in threshold was added so we can maintain some kind of normalcy with stuns. Then it's turned into its own thing. What Dread is talking about is part of the Exsanguinous video. If you're interested in more of this conversation, check out the Exsanguinous video. Not the three-second video, but like the 15-minute video. You'll enjoy the history of defenses and how Ward and Endurance came to be in Last Epoch. That's all we got for now. This is an interesting topic, but we got to cut it off somewhere. I'll see you next time.